you announced in recent days um, around 524 million U.S. dollars in drought aid for the Horn of Africa. Um, U.S. aid to the region for 2023 now stands at around 1.4 billion U.S. dollars. Ma'am, is that enough? I mean, how far does and can this money go towards addressing what you have called a storm of crises that has pushed millions across the Horn of Africa to the brink? Haiti, it is not enough. Uh, the UN has asked for $7 billion. So what you heard announced is just a small contribution toward addressing a major global issue, and that is hunger. It is famine in the Horn of, of Africa. Our $524 million was a huge contribution. It's the largest contribution. It brings our total for the fiscal year to about $2.5 billion, but more is needed. I visited Somalia earlier in the year and made a, a strong appeal to the rest of the world that they should be assisting in this situation. Uh, children should not starve to death. People should not go to bed hungry. Uh, we have the resources to address this issue. We just have to come uh, to the table and bring the needed resources to those people in need. Uh, and I think we, we can do more. Ma'am, I want to turn to the South Africa-Russia weapons controversy that has taken place in recent weeks. Uh, how would you describe the relationship between South Africa and the United States at the moment? I mean, are there limits to this relationship? Look, we have a strong historical relationship with, uh, with South Africa, and that relationship is going to continue based on the priorities of the American people and of the South African people. Uh, we will continue to find ways to work with each other to bring those priorities to the table, whether it's trade, uh, it's uh, development assistance, it's finding uh, pathways for America and, and South Africa to continue to have conversations on the things that we are, are prioritizing in our relationship. Um, Ma'am, South Africa has taken, of course, what it calls a non-aligned stance when it comes to Russia's war in Ukraine. Um, in your view, is South Africa acting like a country that has, is taking a non-aligned stance in this war? Look, we, we've also been very clear on this issue as well, Haiti. There's no neutrality when a member of the P5 attack a smaller nation as Russia has done, an unprovoked aggression against Ukraine, you can't be, uh, you, you can't be neutral on that. This is a violation of everything that the UN Charter stands for. And we've made that point clear to all of our, our partners who have made uh, this, taken the stance of, of neutrality when it comes to what is clearly an aggression which is uh, against the sovereignty uh, and the integrity of a border of an independent country. Uh, Ma'am, what will the United States do if Vladimir Putin shows up in South Africa for the BRICS conference? You know, I think that question should be what will South Africa do if Putin shows up? Uh, South Africa has obligations under uh, international agreements under the ICC. Uh, to turn over an individual who has been uh, convicted. So the question should be to South Africa. Uh, we hope South Africa will do, uh, will do the right thing. Are, are sanctions, do you rule out sanctions at any point? You once said that countries complain about sanctions because they work. Uh, do you foresee sanctions on the horizon should South Africa host Vladimir Putin? We're not going to uh, get into our private conversations with the South African 
uh, government, but we have made clear that there are obligations that we hope and expect that South Africa will, will honor. Uh, Ma'am, as you lead the U.S. delegation to the second session of the U.N. Permanent Forum of Peoples of African Descent, um, I want to talk a little bit about U.S.-Africa relations at the United Nations. Do you anticipate in coming months any opportunities to strengthen U.S.-Africa relations? Um, and do you anticipate um, those relations, those, those ties will be tested, especially at the U.N. in coming months? You know, that is an extraordinarily important uh, question that you ask, Haiti. We work every day to strengthen our relationship with the continent of Africa. For me personally, uh, it is a strong commitment. As you know, I spent most of my career on the African continent. I spend the vast majority of my time meeting with the 54 African member states on a regular basis. There is an A3, the elected members of the Security Council. I engage with them on a regular basis. And our government is strongly committed to continuing to really build on what is already a strong uh, partnership with the African continent. We are the largest donor. Uh, to countries in Africa, to humanitarian programs, development programs. We are a big trade partner uh, on the continent of Africa, and we want to continue to nourish uh, those uh, relationships both here in New York, but also on, on the continent. Um, Ma'am, the, the Africans have for the longest time called for a more um, a permanent role at the UN Security Council. Um, are there any um, movements on that? Is there any progress that has been made on that sense, on that front? Uh, that's something that we're working on every single day. You may recall that last year in September, I gave a speech in San Francisco in which I indicated that we were supportive of African countries and, and others. Uh, we were supportive of UN reform uh, to include more permanent members as well as elected members. The president went further in his speech in September and specifically said that we would support uh, permanent membership for uh, Africa, Latin America, as well as the Caribbean. Since then, I have engaged in a listening tour. I've met with the, C, uh, the C10, the 10 African countries that are engaged on uh, UN reform. I've met individually with African countries, as well as other uh, regions, to talk about how we might uh, implement and really instrumentalize this, uh, uh, this commitment to, uh, to the continent, uh, to UN reform, and this is something that we're continuing uh, to work on. But we have been clear throughout this that we do support uh, permanent uh, membership for, uh, for Africa on the Security Council for our country. Uh, from Africa. Ma'am, uh, finally, um, I want to move to the conflict in Sudan. Um, that country's army chief, Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, has asked the UN to replace its special envoy to that country, Volker Pertes. Um, what does this mean for U.S. and U.S. and U.N. efforts to help bring an end to the conflict in Sudan? I mean, what influence, what diplomatic tools do the UN and the U.S. now have at their disposal to help bring an end to the conflict? Well, as you know, we have been actively engaged since day one in trying to find a solution. Uh, the U.S. government, working with the Saudi government, has held a number of, of meetings in Jeddah that got the two sides to agree to, uh, to a ceasefire, to allow for humanitarian assistance. It's still a work in progress. And as the U.S. and Saudi Arabia continue to work on this, we are very supportive of those efforts here at the United Nations. Uh, we have had a number of meetings in the, uh, the Security Council on the situation in Sudan. Uh, we support the African Union and EGAD uh, efforts, these regional efforts, and we will keep putting pressure on the two sides to move for, toward a ceasefire that will allow for a civilian-run government. And that is something that I think has the support, has support across the board, both uh, 
on the continent of Africa, but also here uh, at the United Nations. Um, Ma'am, where things stand at the moment towards that, um, th that piece that you speak about, uh, do you feel hopeful at the moment or are you concerned about how much or how little progress is being made? You know, I am concerned. I am concerned that the fighting continues. I'm concerned uh, with the number of civilians who have died. Humanitarian workers have been killed. Uh, tens of thousands of people have left uh, Sudan because of this fighting. So I have to be concerned until the fighting ends, until the two parties come to uh, an agreement uh, to allow for the peaceful process that was already taking place to resume where there will be a civilian-run government. Uh, the military can't win this on the battlefield. Uh, the people of, of, of Sudan spoke uh, over a year ago that they want civilian a civilian-run uh, government. So we have to keep the pressure on. We have to increase the pressure until there is a uh, until there is a credible ceasefire and a credible way forward. All right, we're going to leave it there. Uh, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield. Madam, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it.